me I'm pretending to have a deep voice until Twitch tells me I am online. Okay, uh, <coughs> excuse me. Um, Twitch says we are online, so let's get started. We're resuming from where we did previously. Uh, previously, we found we'd gotten a pretty good approximation of um, the start of this eclipse here, uh, this solar eclipse here. Let's go down here a little bit where the penumbral eclipse started. We got that time almost nailed perfectly. Unfortunately, uh, we predict the end of the eclipse very soon uh, thereafter uh, and before it actually ended. And I'm now curious to see if the second eclipse we predict is actually just more of the first one. So it appears that we predict it starts again at 728 and ends again at 934. Now let's take a look here and um, 934 is the correct end time. 345 is the correct uh, beginning time. 346. I mean 345, we said 346. So the question is why between 551 and 728 does do we think that we're, we're not in an eclipse when we are actually in the, right in the middle of that eclipse? Um, and I can't see any reason why, you know, 551, it doesn't look like there's any reason uh, why we should suddenly think we're not in an eclipse. And let me make sure the third one of these is actually completely different, and it looks like it because it's a 1607. So these two events here make up one eclipse, but why is there a gap between them? That's what we're trying to find out. Okay, so what we can do here is... Um, we're in the wrong place. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this code here uh, since we have it in Git and um, we don't really need it anymore. We're not using it anymore. I'm going to go ahead and save to Git before I forget. Git ho! That sounds rude. Um, but anyway, off to Git it goes. And so what we can do here is we can ca um, call this function um, which we normally, uh, well, I guess we, well, the, the problem here is if we call it, um, um, okay, one sec. Okay, we will have someone dropping by shortly uh, who might actually be able to help. Um, and I'm sure the people who are already here, the wonderful people, I love you all. And if you can help, let me know. Okay, so the problem here, of course, is right now um, we call this function a lot, but it doesn't print out anything. So what we can do is be a little bit careful here. Let's see. Because we sort of want to print it out when... Um, we sort of want to print out this... We don't want to print out every call to this function. If we Even if we had print f's in here, uh, uh, printing every call to this function would be sort of insane. It would take, it would do, um, be very ugly. So what we're going to do is, I think I actually wrote a debug function once, never used it. Um, okay. <laughs> Someone just told me that their stack account is one month older than theirs. Um... And, of course, I've been on stack overall for ages. Um, okay, so let's sort of figure out what's going on here. It could be the Earth's rotation. It could be just something stupid I'm doing. Um, if print a message. That's not what this does, actually, though. This returns whether the debug variable is equal to one. Is equal to one. Uh, so that's not good. I guess I never got around to actually writing this function. Uh, so let's not do that. Well, let's go ahead and carefully, um, carefully here. We're going to go ahead and print some stuff out here. If it gets to be too spammy, we'll try to figure out a way just to print it uh, inside of that other loop that we have. And, and we're, we're going to be able to do a little bit there. We're going to print the, um, okay. Uh, I'm also talking on Discord, um, which is not useful to you guys. Um, okay. Is the meta account. 
So I don't, you don't even know what I'm sh showing here, so that doesn't really help you at all. Um, so what we're going to do here is we're going to go ahead and print out every... So let's be, let's be careful what we print out here. Let's, we want to print out the east and west separation. I think we want to print out the gradient, um, which is the, the separation derivative. Oh, and we don't actually have... Um, let's see... Um, so we want to print out not. I mean, we want to print out the gradient itself, and then the value at the gradient, of course, and maybe the value at the origin. Uh, so the gradient itself, which I thought I had printed, and I didn't, um, and I didn't um, delete the. Uh, I just commented that out. Um, Okay, so I've told the person who's been on Discord that I can't talk right at this exact instant. Uh, we'll uh, talk to him later, of course. Um, let's see if he showed up in the chat. He has not, or she has not. Probably a he, I think. I don't really know. Um, and I don't care. So we want to show the gradient here, and we also want to show the gradient value, the value at the gradient. Um, in other words, when we, let's see, uh, gradient QR0, yeah, the, 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 uh, once we get to the surface of the Earth, uh, what, the, uh, the, what the eclipse value is there. Um, so we will go ahead and do that. That should just be grad val. And I'm tempted to show the value at the origin, um, which would just be, let me actually do that, because it might be actually relevant. Um, and that's just going to be something we don't even bother to compute because we don't really need it. But it is going to be separation data. Um, oh wait, wait, wait. West sep, east sep. Right, right. Separation data from the um, from S rot and uh, T rot. In other words, from the original positions. Uh, of after rotation, but before we move them around uh, to uh, do all this stuff. Okay. Um, okay, let's do this. The fact that it's so close to accurate means whatever mistake we're making isn't big, which can be... Whoa, 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 whoa. Can be regarded val at origin. What am I doing here? Um, yeah, it might be nice if I close that off. Try that again. Um, print, yeah, because I don't really know what printf is, do I? Uh, what am I using print? Yep, we need to do printf here. Okay. Uh, one more thing we're going to do here is, um, because we're going to be printing it a lot, we really don't want to count printing it until we're in the um, actual place where we're printing out results. Uh, and here we can... Um, oh, do we call it here, though? Yeah, we do need to call it here. And it doesn't really matter what we use for the last parameter, because we're only interested in what it prints out. And we'll do it at beg and at end. And see what's going on here. And... Let's see... And again, we're only using that to print, so we're not, we don't care about the return value. Um, let's be a little bit fancy here. And so this will be the debugging value. Th there will be plenty of other prints of this, but we're, we're going to ignore them, or hopefully we'll be able to ignore them. Um, Hello and welcome to the stream, other person. Feel free to make yourself known. I know who you are, of course. I just saw you in Discord. Uh, but uh, and if you want to help out here, that's cool. If you want to get onto a, if you want to get onto a Discord chat and help, that'd be great too. Um, and let's see what I'm doing stupid now. Still, I don't know how to do the word print. Um, print, 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 print. I apparently have trouble with the word print. There. There we go. So now, yep, and I should have seen that coming. 
Okay, so um, yeah, kind of wish I'd let's do it. Are we printing the values here too? Oh yeah, we are. Okay, so after the debug, so this is here. Um, the value at the origin is 1.78, no eclipse at the origin. The value here is 3 and 0, so no eclipse, barely an eclipse at the western separation, which is acceptable. The gradient is 133 minus the grad val is 3.57. Okay, so there's something very wrong here. Clearly this is, uh, um, this is, I guess we could have put it in the word beginning or something, but, um, yeah, so this is the beginning of the eclipse. Well, I guess this is actually okay. And at the end of the eclipse, so this is kind of strange. Uh, at the end of the eclipse, the origin is still eclipse, which means there has to be an eclipse somewhere on the surface. Um, but for some reason, the gradient value is 1.6. And I don't, I don't get that. I don't get where if you follow the gradient, which is... Um, slightly, uh, mostly towards the y direction, um, you get, uh, which is close to the um, east sep, why you're not getting, um, why you're getting, so the gradient looks like it's going in like totally the wrong direction. Um, and the only thing I can think of here is, um, The gradient. Okay, so the gradient is going in the, in the um, direction of the greatest increase. I guess what we actually want is the negative gradient, but that doesn't matter because only one of them is going to be um, pointing outwards. So in a case like this, when the, well, we don't know if this is the gradient or the negative gradient. Um, so why why can how can this be? If it, you're at point one eight, I mean we do want to go in the direction where uh, things get more negative. Um, I guess, I don't see that that's a problem. Hello, hello, direction of greatest increase sounds like directional derivatives. It is indeed directional der derivatives. It's the grad, in fact, uh, the gradient. So what we have here, let's go over this a little bit, might even help me a little bit. So we have here a function that measures, um, called separation data, that measures, um, that measures, wow that's up here somewhere, that measures how much of an eclipse we have. And let me go back to this little diagram we have here. Nope, don't have it anymore. Um, we do have an XV, I think, though. Hang on. Hang on while I try to see if I can get... Yay! So in this eclipse diagram here, um... We've taken three bodies and we've drawn a set of coordinate axes. Let's see, are you on Windows XP or something? No, I am on a Linux CentOS uh, using X11. Um, so the um, that is an aesthetic window layout with a sticky out tongue. So I don't know if that is that sarcasm. I can't tell. Usually I use multiple pages, but I'm in a VM, so I can't really do that. Uh, so, th so the windows are sort of crashed into each other. Um, anyway, so th what we can do here is, of course, we have the angular distance between T and S. The S is the sun, and T is whatever is going to be eclipsing us, which is, in, you know, for example, if in a solar eclipse, the moon would be eclipsing the Earth. So we're looking at a solar eclipse. So this is the sun, the moon, and the Earth. And when T gets close enough over here, it'll cast a shadow onto the Earth. Um, and we can measure that shadow using this formula. Uh, the, uh, and this, it turns out this is the right formula, and we'll explain why here in a sec. SEP is the angular separation. In other words, it's this SQT angle. The TAR is the angular radius of T, so it's basically um, that right there, which I probably should put a point there. Uh, and SAR is the angular radius of the sun. Um, and if you look at this number here, which looks pretty strange, uh, it's zero if the sum of the angular radii is exactly equal to the separation angle. So when that happens, that means um, these two are just touching each other. We're just at the start or the end of an eclipse. 
It's negative one if the separation angle plus the angular radius of S equals the angular radius of T, which means uh, that T, uh, there's a total overlap here. In other words, um, S and T are totally overlapping, so there's an annular eclipse or a total eclipse or an eclipse of some sort. Um, you know, but, but it's a total eclipse. It's a, all of T is inside all of S. So that it's not a partial eclipse anymore. And any value between zero and negative one means there's a partial eclipse. So the idea here is, now we can measure the, um, this value here, the separation data, which I call it, let's see, um, from the center of Q, right, center of the Earth right here. But that's not very useful because obviously there's no one at the center of the Earth. So we really want to measure it on the surface of the Earth right here. So over here, what we do is we find the gradient, the, you know, the maximum increase in direction, um, and we follow it till we hit the surface. Although it occurs to me we should probably take, uh, because we're looking for an eclipse, we're looking for um, the greatest eclipse, not the, the leastest eclipse. Uh, we're looking for both, actually. Um, we should actually follow the negative gradient to find where the, um, the, this value uh, is the lowest, the value of how much of an eclipse we have. I don't think that'll make a difference, though, but it might. Uh, because in theory, the gradient and the negative gradient should be negatives of each other. So that shouldn't have an effect. So over here, what we do, clips around the world. Um, first, we compute the three radiuses of whatever we're given. Um, then we find the position of S and T with respect to Q, so Q can be at the origin. Uh, then, as given here, uh, these could be anywhere in three-dimensional space. We need to rotate them so they're all in one plane and so that S is on the x-axis. And we do that with this uh, matrix of transformation here. Multiply, multiply, and, um, and then we, instead of trying to compute the derivative, an derivative analytically, we just estimate it by starting at Q and going out a little bit. Now, I think one mistake I made here is I divided by way too much. I think maybe that was the problem. Uh, we lose too much precision if we go to um, very small numbers. So maybe that was the issue. In fact, let's see if that was the issue by recompiling. Okay, recompile, 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 and then let's see. Um, so the problem we were having was with the uh, very first um, eclipse ending in the middle of the real eclipse, and we are still having that problem. Um, So the question is, yeah, I'm not, I'm not exactly following why it's doing this now. Um, I guess, okay, I guess the other thing is we actually want the, um, um, so these are the limit points here. East view and west view are the limit points. And we measure the uh, separation values at the limit points. Um, and then, let's see. Right, oh, it's okay. The oh, okay. Let's see. Yes. Because when we move to the east, when we move towards um, in this direction, towards the positive x-axis, both s and t will have their x values decreased. Um, so this says if the gradient is less than zero, we multiply it by negative one, so we necessarily have a positive gradient. That means when we do the subtraction here, um, we're looking at a point that's in this half of the circle, where the sun is still shining. Um, and then we compute the grad val, the value once we've hit the surface uh, at the gradient there, and um, and, and then we find, uh, in this case, the um, minimum value of all three, which should give us the, the greatest eclipse. Um, but we don't include the origin here, 
maybe we should, but I don't, I don't see why though. East, west, and then the gradient value. And the only thing I can think of is I'm not computing the gradient correctly because, um, uh, let's see, the gradient, west up, east up. I don't know, huh. I guess that's where I'm lost. I don't, I don't really understand why, um, why my gradient value looks like uh, this. And, um, so the gradient value is computed by looking at, um, the position of S and its radius, the position of T and its radius, the position of, uh, the radius of Q, the value of delta we want to use, and it, the value is returned in the gradient. So maybe I've done something wrong in separation data derv, because it doesn't seem to be giving me what I want. So it takes um, position, radius, position, radius, radius, delta, and it returns a result. So let's see. Um, so we start out by just setting s temp and t temp to be equal to the original vectors. Um, then we, let's see, S temp minus equals J times delta. Uh, we move east or west, by in, sorry, we move plus or minus one step in either the X, Y, or the Z direction. Um, and I equals zero is X, I equals one is, um, is the Y direction, I equals two is the Z direction. And then we count those separations. We look at the deltas and we combine them and I don't really see how this is creating an issue here and then we compute the result so um, any thoughts um, deltas 1, deltas 3, 5, 4 um, I mean, we could look at these values here that say when you move in the x, y, or z direction, what happens. Uh, the other possibility is the uh, gradient doesn't remain stable, and as you follow it, it changes direction. Um, and that's another possibility. Um... Let me, okay, hello, hello, I feel like I've jumped in deep and because I don't know what's going on, and that is fair because uh, really we're pretty deep into this, um, so to be honest, I don't even know how to really catch you up, uh, I mean the closest we have to something good is this diagram, um, and what we're basically doing is we're looking at the angular separation between two objects, and then at their angular radi radiuses. And the idea is if the angular radiuses add up to the angular separation, the two objects are touching. Uh, we, have, um, we have that going on there. Um, and if the angular radius of one of them is bigger, bigger than the, you know, and not big enough to enclose this T, if the angular separation is less than this minus this, we we have a total eclipse. So that's the general idea here. Um, the problem is I'm having to trouble, and we can compute it at any point we want, but we need to figure out where it is minimal and maximal on this half circle here. And that's where I'm having sort of some, some trouble with this. Um, it's sort of weird that the gradient is always greatest in the plus y direction. It's like for some reason going here makes it makes it bigger. Uh, when you go here in this plus x direction, um, both of these become bigger because the angular radiuses increase, but the angular separation also increases because as you get closer to them, they they spread further out. This angle here is bigger than this angle here, so that that is a sort of a 
sort of a weirdness as well. Um, so I guess the only other thing I can really do here is we can look at the um, we can look at the eclipse around the world at the um, between the beginning and end to see if it at least n is not you know right at the uh, isn't right at the the uh, y-axis constantly. Presumably at this point it'll have moved somewhere towards the x-axis. So let's see if we can do this. Okay. So let's see, valid origin, valid origin, east sep, west sep. Oh, okay, hang on. Wait. Valid origin, east sep. Oh, right, we need to wait until we get to a debug. Okay. Okay, so here we have... Yeah, what's weird is the gradient is like this, like this, like this. The gradient always seems to want to point in the negative y-axis direction very strongly. And I don't really understand why that is. Um, so I guess that is one of my issues here is I don't understand why um, why the greatest increase will be always towards the negative or positive y-axis. That doesn't really make sense to me. I'm going to try one more thing here. I'm going to... Um, I'm going to set delta actually equal to the radius of Q. Um, so instead of just going out like a little bit, we're actually going to go all the way to the surface and measure the... Uh, the uh, the value to to determine where the greatest increase is. Uh, so this should be this should be pretty okay. So this will you know I don't actually know what it'll do. Let's find out. Let's I'll stop pretending that I know what I'm doing. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at this now. Dun, 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 dun. Okay, gradient still very much in the negative y direction. So I don't I don't get that. I don't really understand that. Um, yeah. All right. Well, let's take a look at it in real life real quick. I think this is uh, 551 Greenwich time. And over here Why am I on a page like this? Or this? Or this? I think this is the one I want. Um, no, it's not actually. This is the one I want. I'm sorry, that's the one I want. Angular Solar Eclipse. So this is the one where at 551, we can kind of. Okay, so at this point, the maximum eclipse, it's not 100%, but it is the maximum, is right in the direction of the sun, which would be the x-axis. Um, oh, what's interesting, though, is that's exactly when we lose the uh, eclipse at the edge. See, so we have the eclipse right there at the edge, and at 551, very roughly speaking, we lose it right at this edge of the world. In other words, the edge of the world that is 90 degrees away from... Is that 90 degrees away from the sun is? I guess. If this is the center, that must be. So that is the point where um, east sep and west sep become zero. And I think that actually shows this. West sep becomes zero. Okay. Interesting. So the problem is the gradient is not doing what we want. We, we're, the gradient is being weird for some reason. So if you're at the center of the Earth, um, which is right there-ish, you would expect the maximum increase to be pointing, like, this way. Um, oh, no, actually, hang on. I can't actually spin this, but... Whoa, no, 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 stop, 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 stop the world. Okay, and... Uh, but also we've made it so that the... Uh, 
the sun is on the x-axis so we would have this kind of lower like this and the moon is at the um, is over here also um, but that still should mean the low the axis is right towards the x-axis and I guess I just don't get why it doesn't recognize that um, okay let's go back here real quick um, So the west sep, uh, east sep. So I guess we're going to just basically look at the. Um, let's just look at it where, what it would be like right, at you know going onto the x-axis itself. So let's see, that's the west view, the east view. Um, um, look, let's see, straight view s. Uh, straight view T. Straight view meaning right along this line towards the sun. And I get the feeling that this will help us tell us what's going on. And then we will need spice double. Fine, we'll just actually do this. Uh, straight view will be S rot zero. Um, because we're going to the right, this goes to the left. S rot 1, and we don't change the other parameters. Here it's going to be T rot 0 minus QR 0. Um, T rot 1, T rot 2, those don't change. And then, yeah, this is actually a bad time to have gotten into this because this is a, this is pretty close to complete. Uh, next project, hopefully, if you want, you can get in earlier. Um, and the straight sep is going to be the separation as measured from these. So that is going to be straight view s. Radiuses don't change. Straight view t. And that radius doesn't change either. Um, and I was never happy with this, so I'm going to change this really quickly to um, the two separate lines. Okay. And this will be straight set. And this will at least confirm that the eclipse is greater at, you know, if you go straight in the x direction instead of traveling in the y, y direction. If that's true, we can figure out why the um, why the gradient function isn't figuring that out also. Um, if it's not true, we need to figure out what we're doing wrong. Okay. So let's go back here and do da -da. and let's try this one more time. No errors. And we need to wait till we have the first about da da da. Okay. Um, okay, so what this says is if you go directly towards the sun, um, you're, uh, you have no solar eclipse. So something is wrong with this, obviously. We are, we are, um, we are going in the wrong direction for some reason. Um, and I probably should have put a new line in there somewhere. But that doesn't matter. Okay, so straight step here is saying we're at uh, point 0.8. I'm sorry, no, no. Um, that's the beginning. Here it is at the end. Straight step is minus point uh, 0.18. Whereas east step and west step are much higher. Okay, so something is wrong here. Um, the gradient measurement is not correct. Um, it's not computing dx, dy, or dz correctly because dx um, should be, you know, when you move in the dx direction, you should get this number here. Um, dx should be towards the positive x-axis because uh, the increase with in terms of y from the 
So the value at the origin and the straight set value, um, that's the only one where it's going down, and the other two it's going up. Um, oh, so I wonder if that's the problem. Um, hmm. Okay. So... Okay, okay, I think I'm seeing it now. So what we're saying here is if you're at the origin, the greatest decrease... Oh, because the greatest increase occurs uh, towards the y, towards... Oh, uh, towards the y value here, towards the eastern and western horizon. It assumes the greatest negative value uh, will be occurring in the other direction. Um, so it's not really a good indicator of, of where the maximum value is occurring. Because it assumes that if you're getting a great deal of positive value in one direction, um, going in the opposite direction in Y will get, get you um, a much lower value. Okay, so now I'm seeing what's, what's wrong here. Um, okay, now I see what's going on here. So using gradients here apparently is not the right technique. Um, huh. Because if it sees a huge increase, it assumes there's a huge decrease in the opposite direction, but that's not true, actually. So what it's seeing here is that if you go in um, this direction, things get a lot less eclipsed. So it assumes incorrectly that if you go in this direction, they get more eclipsed, but they don't. Uh, it, it sort of ignores the fact that if you go in this direction, you get sort of the best result. Um, okay, so we're going to cheat a little bit here. Um, apparently, I don't trust this though. And we could use the ternary method here to find the maximum value, uh, or minimum value rather, of the eclipse um, between east view, west view, and east view, west view, and here, sort of along this curve here. Um, I'm tempted to say that it's going to be just, uh, if you head towards the sun, you're going to get the, the, um, the maximal value of the eclipse. Um, and, and that's really, really close to being accurate, but I don't think it's actually true. Um, so, gradient. That's disappointing, though. Um, so, the function is, is ugly. Um, Okay, um, my guess we could look at when we're over here, we could look at the gradient and see if it has a left or east bound component as opposed to being purely towards the sun. That's probably the harder way of doing it. The easier way of doing it is just to uh, return the minimum of east sept, west sept, and straight sept. And let's go crazy here and comment these out. Um, I guess we don't need to comment, um, we don't even really need to compute the gradient anymore because we're not going to use it. Um, so this is, this is sad. We're not going to use the gradient, we're just going to use three points and take the minimum of those. Okay. And instead of Radvel, this is going to be straight sep. This is, does not make me happy. I mean, it's going to give us accurate answers, but it still won't make me happy. Okay. <sighs> Let's see what that does. 
And it's going to bug me because this is going to work and I'm not going to be happy with it. So just be prepared for that. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Unused variable. Oh, right, because we're not really going to be computing the grad anymore. Delta. Um, right. Okay. And since that was just a warning. Okay, now it only, okay, now it looks like it's going to work, unfortunately. Um, so the first eclipse starts at 3.46 according to this and ends at 9.34. Um, 3.46, 9.34. So, yep, it's, it's actually even more accurate than before. In fact, let's see, 3.46 in one second is three seconds of accuracy, 9.34 in one, three seconds late in each case which is a very, very tolerable difference. Okay, let's see how it do does it predict the other solar eclipse for, for next year. Um, it says December 14th will be from 1333 to 1853. December 14th. Thirteen thirty-three fifty-five down to the second, eighteen fifty-three oh three, off by about five seconds. So yeah, we this is um, this is now working, and I'm not happy with it because I'm not a hundred percent convinced that the maximum eclipse will always occur um, at the point facing the sun. Um, so not cool. Not cool at all. Works. Right answer, wrong reason. All right, let's see if we can figure out the if we can compute the lunar eclipses. Um, for next year, and that would be if we flip the moon and the Earth. 301, 399, and let's see how this goes. I guess we can go to the debug debug because it doesn't really do anything. Um, and there's really no need to call Eclipse around the world because we, we're not printing anything there anymore. So this... Uh, unused variable grad, unused variable t temp, and s temp. Let's go ahead and get rid of those two. And we're not using the grad anymore. And hey, we can get them to <laughs> barely into one line. And let's go ahead and do this, this. And then gorgeous. Okay, so according to this, the first lunar eclipse, the from when the moon starts to be eclipsed to when it's no longer eclipsed at all, will be from 1709 to 2110. Or 1709 to 2111, if we round off. And... Uh, let's see. 1707, and I say 1709, not exact. Uh, 2112 and 2110. Well within acceptable tolerances, so this does tell us when, um, when the moon is eclipsed. So now the question is, is this only a partial eclipse? So this is not a uh, total total eclipse. Um, penumbral, yeah, penumbral means only part of the moon is being uh, shadowed. June fifth to sixth. I get the feeling this is going to be exactly what we expect it to be. Very accurate. All right, 1747 to 2102. Let's see, I'll be in the right date. Yep, June 5th. 
1745 to 2104, 1747 to 2102. So we're again off by a couple of minutes, uh, probably because we were treating the Earth as a sphere and not a not an ellipse. But again, well, well within the tolerances that we would want to have. Here, let's see. So now we could look at the total eclipse of December 14th. Um, so let's do this. So now for a total eclipse, we would have the uh, maximum eclipse value, total eclipse somewhere on the Earth, the maximum eclipse value would be less than negative 1. So let's see if we can make that our search instead. Uh, so less than zero mean there's an, means there's an eclipse somewhere. Um, less than minus one means there's a total eclipse somewhere. And let's see if we can... Uh, and we can actually do both of them if we wanted to. Right now we're just uh, being a little sloppy here. Okay, ooh. Uh, oh, I guess that's the above. The first one's actually probably going to be like total... Um, Uh-oh. We might have issues here. Oops. So this is actually the same eclipse being listed twice. Uh, but it appears that it thinks that there's a break being taken. God damn it. Okay. Okay. So. <sighs> All right. So less than negative one should be a total eclipse. Um, and so when does totality start? Full eclipse, 1432. We nailed it. Last part of it, 1754. But for some reason, we think that in between those two times, there is no eclipse. And why would that be? Uh, and this might be that situation where um, the total eclipse is not exactly lined up with the center of the sun. Um, which seems weird, because you would think it would have to be like that. Hmm. Okay. Well, we can always go back to the debugging. And in this case, we will, uh, let's see. Look at the valid, the origin, these three. We won't look at the gradient. I think we can, uh, we, we don't really need that. Okay. So let's go ahead and do this. Compiled. And we do need to wait till we get to the debug. Okay. Right, and this is the, we have this, um, We have this like one minute eclipse here. Yeah, okay. Uh, so at the beginning, the value at the origin is this, the value at the origin is that, the value the, those, those are all fine. The value at the east is negative one. East is negative one. Value straight towards the sun is only 0.87. The separation goes back to negative one. 
and um, the straight separation is damn E separation negative one, bigger than negative one, back to negative one. Um, so what the hell? Um, I mean, it appears that what's going to well, let's actually take a look at this real quick. So, so right at the beginning of the eclipse, we have, well, it's not even the total eclipse, hang on. Um, so when did we say this was going to all begin and end? 1432 is when we say it's going to begin, and I think that is when... Um, yeah, when the first part of the solar eclipse uh, touches out of the horizon here. Aha! Okay. So after that, the problem is the, um, the greatest value of the eclipse. Is not in the, so the sun, I guess, is over, like, over here somewhere. Um, so it looks like we're not, we're not gonna be able to get away with this. We're gonna have to find the greatest value on the, on the theta curve here between um, between uh, negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. Uh, there are ways to do that. There is the uh, the, the, um, the uh, ternary method to do that. Um, and so I guess the other time we're going to see here is the 1753 is when the total eclipse starts to set. Uh, so... So I guess the problem here is the maximum value is occurring neither at, there we go, um, is occurring neither at the eastern nor the western nor straight ahead. It's occurring at some different point. Um, what's interesting is here is that we've shown that it must occur at the equator in the sense that it must occur in the xy plane. So what we could do here is try to bring back that code we had earlier except we don't need to go through latitudes just through longitudes and just basically see what's what's going on here uh, this could be actually quite ugly though um, let's see if we can bring up git GUI here git tk Woo. um... let's see Oh wow! There it is. Um, let me go ahead and cut and paste this exactly as is. And then we will actually let me go ahead and cut and paste it with the comments exactly the way it is. And then we'll cut it down to one dimension since we don't really need. Um, we don't really need the uh, the latitude to change as we've decided. Okay. Wait, really? Edit paste. Not cool. I guess you can't kill off the uh, application before you're done with it. All right. All right. All right. All right. That's fair. In other words, you can't when you're cutting and pasting. You can't. Um, you have to leave open the application you're paint cutting from. Oh, this is a huge freaking thing, isn't it? Okay. Control C. Y. There we go. Now I can kill off git tk. I'm going to go to this diagram. It's bothering me. Okay. So from here... 
Let me go ahead and save this and then we will tweak this some more. Save meaning push it to git. And you can't see what I'm doing. It's okay. It's okay. Relax. We're just doing some stuff. Okay. Now we're not. We've decided to give up on the gradient. That's not our. That's not the way to go here. Uh, what we can do here, um, we only need to go through the longitude, not the latitude. Um, this will mean we need to go back through. Um, and we actually need to go from minus 90 to 90 because uh, the the rest of the planet is in darkness. So we can do this. We will need Q temp. We won't need this. We will need Q temp, uh, S temp. Um, right. So it's this. Here we go. Uh, this should be fine. Um, all right. So what we're going to do here is um, yeah. So we're only going to change the longitude. We will get rid of these minus signs because they don't actually compile. Um, let's see. All right, so this way we can compute. Um, I'll go ahead and put in latitude as zero, but we don't really. Um, we don't. It's got to be on the zero that this happens. Okay, and all we need here then is uh, Q temp, S temp, and T, T temp, and I will put them separately because um, we probably will get rid of. Them. Well, we might get rid of them. Caps lock. Okay, so we have Q temp 3, S temp 3, T temp 3, and um, that's going to be really ugly. Uh, we're going to be printing out a lot of crap. But, you know, we can, we can do that. I mean, I'm hoping we can do that. Okay. Ooh, um... Accept it. It does need to be all speed declared because we accept data because nope, we don't actually need that. We can actually just put it in there and maybe fix up some of these parentheses so it works. We can just compute it and print it directly. We don't need to go through an auxiliary variable now uh, anymore. Or well, we never needed to before anyway. We just did it for convenience, I guess. Alrighty. Now. Yay. Evaluate origin. ESEP minus one, west sep, straight sep. Uh, point. Um. Hmm. Strange. Now this does not look correct. Um, the fact that they're exactly equal everywhere, not cool. So let's see what we're doing here. Um. S rot Q temp. Are we computing Q temp? Um, spherical rectangular coordinates, QR0, 0, zero longitude, Q temp, and then we're creating S temp and T temp as separation values, and then hmm, that should be correct though. Strange. These values should not be all the same. OK. 
Q-temp should be changing each time. And I mean, if nothing else, um, oh, uh, well, that should be fine. I get the feeling I'm missing something here. So why don't we make things even worse than they already are? Q temp, as we move from longitude negative 90 to 90, should have different y parameters um, and different x parameters, but the z parameter should remain zero. Um, so why why is this true here? Okay, because straight view it's only the x and the, at, at these values it's only the y. So that seems reasonable. Alrighty. Because we're not printing enough crap here, and this is where I start printing stuff to make sure that I actually know what's being printed. I'll say alpha. Well, let's see. We'll say Qtemp here, because that's what this is. Alrighty, Qtemp 0, Qtemp I get the feeling it's not being computed properly, and I'm, I'm almost sure that's the issue. Um, because if it is, then Stemp and Ttemp should be changing, and separation data should be changing, unless something hideously has gone wrong here. Um, and I'm going to bet you anything I have to do a touch BC, which they hate to. Touch BC occultations. Um, make pipe to less. And this should do it. Yep. Um, okay, it's even showing right, actually right here, um, Q temp is not changing. Um, either that or something very seriously weird is going on. Yeah. So, yeah, so let's figure out what's going on here. Okay, so we're taking um, QR0, the co-latitude is 0. Um, the only thing you can think of here is any dots, because it's confusing these with integers. Uh, QR0 should be, an, or I'm not computing QR0 correctly. Nope, I am. All right, well, let's see what this does. Huh. Yeah, it's like it's always pointing directly to the North Pole, so not cool. Um, so spherical to rectangular, maybe we'll just do We'll print it before it does anything else, but this is this is strange. Radians per degree C times longitude. That should be radians. Um, QR zero should be fine. We computed from Bod Verd, so. Um, The only thing I can think of is I've got latitude and longitude reversed, maybe? Oh, I know what's wrong. This number here is the co-latitude, not the latitude. Um, so if I want if I mean the equator, the co-latitude is actually 90 minus 0, which is 90, which is minus pi over 2. Um, and I think they actually have a value for this called half pi. Uh, if they don't, I'm going to find out very quickly. Okay, so now, yeah, now we can see that the value of, of Q10 is changing. Okay, good. So that little hurdle being hurdled, because they use the co-latitude instead of the latitude. The co-latitude is 90 minus the latitude. Uh, if that's not confusing enough. Okay. <laughs> it is going to take a while. Okay. 
So east sep is minus 1, west sep is 22.6, straight sep is 0.87. Uh, I think we can stop putting q temp, actually, that's excessive. Although it's not going to help us a lot, but it is excessive. Okay. Dun 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 dun. Okay, so the value of the origin is this, E separation value is this, which, as you can see very correctly, shows up here. Um, and the west separation value is 2.6, straight separation is 0.87, so we go from minus 1, uh, 0 0.87, 0 0.65, down to, uh, down to 0, up to the value at 0, which is the straight sep, and then up, 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 this is not good. What's going on? That value should not have increased like that. That's that's not good. Hmm. Now let's let's okay. Um. And the only thing I can think is that we're going in the wrong direction. Um, now going from minus 90 up to plus 90, uh, when we should be going, okay, so I, so I think, well, have I gotten rid of my lovely diagram? Probably did, didn't I? Uh, let's go ahead and bring it up over here, though. And we'll just say eclipse diagram. Ta-da! Okay. So I think we're going from here to here, but I'm beginning to wonder now if minus 90 to 90 is like that. If I've got my, um... If I've got my directions misoriented. So... This is the x-axis, this is the y-axis, the z-axis is coming towards us, we can't see it. Um, so this is the y-axis 0, this is 0, minus 90, minus 180, so I think we've been doing this all wrong because uh, what we want is, yeah, let's see, uh, this is x, this is y. Um, this is 90 degrees, 180, 270. So no, that is correct, negative 90 to 90. Um, all right, let's take a quick look here. Um, Something is very suspicious here. All right, we're going to go back to printing QTemp again. I think I know what's wrong. Um, not really. I just like saying that. Thanks for the uh, users, if you're real, who are hanging around. But even if you're not, I totally understand. Okay. Okay, so here's what's interesting. Um, we're looking towards the positive x-axis, but Q-temp is showing that we're getting negative values of x, which is very, very wrong. Um, so whatever the hell we're doing, we're doing it in the wrong direction. That's a pretty easy proof there. So we should be going from 90 to 270, I guess. Um, and I'm wondering if when we set up our, um, when we set up our um, our uh, two vector system, we maybe should have been careful. Um, because I think this maybe forces T to be in the uh, 
in the positive x direction, uh, which means this will work for a while, but it won't work uh, long term. But let's let's go ahead and mess with this real quick, um, and say from 90 to 270 instead of from negative 90 to, to 90. Okay. See so what this does. Okay. Now correctly, we have x being positive. Um, and now let's see. This helps us out. Dun 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 dun. Actually, once again, I'm going to stop printing Q. Okay, let's see what's going on here. And let's wait till we have a debug, till we have something going on. Da da da. Da 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 da. -da. Okay, value at the origin is this, um, straight step is this, at 90 it is 2.6, and we're going down towards, um, yep, not looking good, we're not going to hit minus, oh actually we will, we will just hit minus 1 here, which is fine. Uh, now in the middle, east separation is that, the west separation is that, the straight separation is that. Going down from 2, 1, oh yeah, there we go. So there we have, that's the, this is the middle of the pseudo-eclipse. And that's nice. So that is really going down a little bit below 1. And then at the end of the, what we think is the end of the eclipse, um, Going down, going down, going down to partial, and going down to just minus one. Okay, so this is still, yeah, it's still wrong though. Um, So this is still going to be just a few seconds afterwards. Yep. Um, so I guess the only thing I can think of is somehow um, when we set up that frame of reference, we need to make sure that however we're rotating, we only look at positive values of, of Q. Of, of X, rather. Um, so we could go from minus 180 to 180 and reject any values where Q temp of 0 is less than 0. Um, I'm also beginning to wonder if I'm doing this incorrectly. We want S temp minus Q temp. No, I'm sorry, S rot minus Q temp. That's fine. T Ram and Q Town. Okay, um, I, it's been an hour and 15 minutes, not a re really long stream. Um, we're doing okay with partial eclipses, I think, and now we need to figure out the solution for total eclipses, and I think we're pretty close. I think we can look at all the points on the, um, on the sphere and, and see uh, where that is happening. It's also possible that we should look at the poles because those are also extrema points. Um, the north and the north and south pole will have equal values, so we need to look at one of the poles. Um, so that might be another solution. Might be another thing to look at there. All right. Thank you for watching, and talk to you next time.